Devotions for Wednesday, February 28th, 2024. A reading from Jeremiah, chapter 30, verses 18 through 22. Thus says the Lord, I'm going to restore the fortunes of the tents of Jacob and have compassion on his dwellings. The city shall be rebuilt upon its mound and the citadel set on its rightful site. Out of them shall come thanksgiving and the sound of merrymakers. I will make them many and they shall not be few. I'll make them honored and they shall not be disdained. Their children shall be as of old. Their congregation shall be established before me and I will punish all who oppress them. Their prince shall be one of their own. Their ruler shall come from their midst. I will bring him near and he shall approach me. For who would otherwise dare to approach me, says the Lord. And you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Why? A friend of mine recently told me a story about an incident that happened to his son at college. One morning, the son had an appointment. When he got into his car and turned the key, the engine came alive with a roaring and rattling sound like he'd never heard before. After turning everything off, he looked under the vehicle where he could see cut bolts, nuts, and shards of metal. Someone had stolen his catalytic converter in the parking lot. It is easy to figure out why it was taken. Converters are valuable in resale and they are filled with expensive elements. Someone wanted money and that was a fast way to get it. However, it is not always easy to figure out the why behind some actions. One morning I discovered that one of my tires was flat. Upon closer examination, I could see the puncture from a knife on the sidewall, leaving the tire beyond repair. Why would someone do that? It just didn't make any sense. Much of the book of Jeremiah deals with prophecies about the bad things Judah and Israel have experienced and will continue to experience. Invading armies, destruction, devastation, suffering, and more, all which go far beyond vehicle damage. As each malady happens or is predicted, you can almost hear the people cry out, why? But they were not ready to accept the answer. Jeremiah pretty much made it clear that they themselves were to blame, and they were given ample opportunity to change their ways. They strayed from God, and while they were on their own, things were not working out so well for them. They did not want to hear about their participation in the problem, so things continued to get worse. God had already saved them from destruction many times over, but now seemed to be running out of patience. In this section of Jeremiah, there is a dramatic change in message and tone. There is a shift from suffering and desolation to talk of restoration, celebration, and joy. A new promise is given that is filled with hope and thanksgiving. The unasked question centers on why the abrupt redirection. The answer reveals less about the people and more about God. God loves the people of Judah and does not desire that they be punished or suffer in any way. God is gracious, merciful, and abounding in steadfast love, but they keep going astray. They are not being restored to a right relationship because of their response to God's word, they are being forgiven in spite of their sinful ways. This passage is a reminder that we are like the people of Judah and that God's love for us is greater than our sin. The Lord desires us to be restored to a right relationship and God's love can overcome any obstacle that may be put in the way. Let us pray. God of compassion, we do not follow your will or listen to your word as you desire us to do. We go astray in thoughts, words, and deeds, often bringing others along with us. We are not worthy to be in your presence, yet you continually call us back to you. Help us to realize the magnitude of your forgiveness and to respond to your love by glorifying your holy name in all that we say and do. Amen.